Um, it's much more than a JPEG, right? You have to think of NFTs simply as a digital contract. Anything can be an NFT. Um, you can NFT, you know, physical labels that a corporation has to actually track in the supply chain to ensure that there's consumer protection and no knockoffs. There's, there's a multitude of things. Now, um, what we view NFTs as being as is, is a really wonderful vehicle for not only diversifying the income streams for a lot of these impact projects around the world, but also changing the narrative. Right. There's a there's something that I like to say, and that's that, you know, art, art can be political. Money is power. And you put them together, you have a movement. And with mm. NFTs come this community that is often very galvanized, very, um, very motivated, very passionate ab around an issue or around a cause or around, you know, a specific drop is what they call them in the NFT world when you release your, your NFT drop. And mm -hmm. so not only does it diversify your income, it also helps um, change the narrative. Right. I think that guilt has been the, the motivating factor for a lot of impact organizations saying, you know, well, this is a problem, we have to solve it, and, you know, you're bad if you don't. It's not the most motivating factor, though, right? And so NFTs can be, um, you know, music, uh, augmented reality, virtual reality. It can be very experiential and immersive. And so if you are able to actually, you know, provide an experience for somebody that they're getting, you know, real-world value and utility and education out of, um, you know, they're far more apt to want to, to, to be involved with it. And so I think that NFTs are definitely in a transitionary period for the next couple of years. We are still far away from mass adoption, but with, you know, big companies like Facebook and everyone piling in on the space, it's, it's inevitable, right? We're only growing more attached to our digital identities and our phones than we are less. And so um, we're very excited to sort of be, you know, one of the first in the space to really leveraging this specifically for, you know, making the world a better place. If I can... Let's, let's say about a thousand NFTs on Ethereum would be equivalent to about a cruise ship traveling 20 kilometers. If I could raise, you know, $2 million just to, to rehabilitate endangered rhinos that were victims of poaching uh, mm -hmm. via a wonderful group called Remembering Wildlife um, or Saving the Survivors, sorry, would I, would I not do that because a cruise ship traveled 20 kilometers, right? There's a cost benefit analysis to be, to be measured here, right? In the space, just the way it is. So what we do is we have contracts that can actually track a 25 year lifespan of that nft what would be the approximate emissions within you know an 80 percent accuracy range and then we offset that not to the tune of neutrality but to the tune of carbon negative now a lot of people might say well you're just you know stealing from peter to pay paul but again i ask the question if this is money that can help keep the lights on for an organization that's doing vital work to save an endangered species are, and we're also putting money in the pockets of these incredibly valuable, you know, Vera or gold standard certified projects, carbon offset projects, then is this not, you know, the least of all evils? I am of the belief that most people in this world want to be a part of something greater than themselves. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of people don't know how to do it. I think a lot of people feel overwhelmed by the amount of everybody's got a problem, everybody's got a cause. And a lot of times you say, okay, well, what the heck can I do, right? Mm -hmm. And donating money often feels like it stops at the, at the swipe of the credit card. It doesn't, you know, you might get a newsletter, you might get a, you know, a, a, a postcard, but that doesn't feel like you're connected to the impact. And what NFTs can do is from start to finish for years and years and years, you're part of a community that can be giving you access to experiences, to, you know, meet and greets, to, you know, metaverse, to games, to, to something, and not, not to mention, you're also getting something that you can give back and get your money back, right? So it's like, it turns a cost center into a revenue generating center. And then it also turns it into a constant feedback loop of what is the actual outcome on the ground? How am I learning and, 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 and contributing to the community in which we're helping? So mm -hmm. I just think that it really changes the game in terms of people's uh, ability to stay involved, to feel like they're, they got skin in the game and like they're a part of this fight and, uh, and be rewarded for doing so such a competitive space and especially with covid you, know, you haven't been able to hold fundraisers you haven't you know money's money's tight are we heading for an economic you know collapse like it's 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 scary to have to worry about where your next round of funding is but mm -hmm. it'd be awesome to log on every day and you know just like you have your fundraising manager you have your discord community manager they log on and say hey ten thousand guys who support us here's what we're working on today here's some pictures from the field here's we're going to organize a meeting with the local um you know tribesmen that we've who is going to you know, talk about you know, his experience uh, over the last year fighting climate change. Whatever the case may be, you can provide a digital experience to people that will keep the money flowing. And then at mm -hmm. the same time, you can provide them with a piece of art or, or you know, again, this access pass that grows in value that can get them money back. So if somebody says, okay, well, 
you know, I, I'm really passionate about this cause, but I, you know, I'm getting married. I need to make some money. Well, I'll, I'll sell it to someone and they're in the community. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, there's opportunity here, I think, to, to create real passion in the metaverse. Like not everybody can buy an NFT, but everyone can see one. Not everyone can, you know, own a VR set, but you can still go and see these, these metaverses. But as this becomes more prevalent in people's lives, I am of the opinion that whether or not we sell one to you doesn't matter. It's whether or not we help you reflect on your role in the natural world. If we educate you, if we inspire you, if we create a little change, then that snowballs, right? And it's mm -hmm. those experiential, you know, art or just any anything like even if you go to a concert because you want to see Justin Bieber dance around in the metaverse and he start and we bring in a fireside chat for half an hour with the Nat Geo Explorer who talks about the plight of glaciers you sat there and listened to it and maybe you know there's a there's a wonderful line from Tupac which I've always tried to live my life by which is I may not change the world but I guarantee I'll spark the mind that will right and so that's what I believe that our goal is to do here we we're not going to get you know 500 billion dollars or trillion dollars in nfts sold and then just you know change it overnight but we can mm -hmm. create a cascading effect of people who are connected engaged motivated and trying to change things in whatever capacity they can so that's kind of where i believe nfts can can play that role in the metaverse like not everybody can buy an nft but everyone can see one not everyone can you know own a VR set, but you can still go and see these, these metaverses. But as this becomes more prevalent in people's lives, I am of the opinion that whether or not we sell one to you doesn't matter. It's whether or not we help you reflect on your role in the natural world. If we educate you, if we inspire you, if we create a little change, then that snowballs, right? And it's mm -hmm. those experiential, you know, art or just any, anything. Like even if you go to a concert because you want to see Justin Bieber dance around in the metaverse and he start and we bring in a fireside chat for half an hour with the Nat Geo Explorer who talks about the plight of glaciers. You sat there and listened to it. And maybe, you know, there's a, there's a wonderful line from Tupac, which I've always tried to live my life by, which is I may not change the world, but I guarantee I'll spark the mind that will. Right. And so that's what I believe that our goal is to do here. We, we're not going to get, you know, 500 billion dollars or trillion dollars in NFTs sold and then just, you know, change it overnight. But we can mm -hmm. create a cascading effect of people who are connected, engaged, motivated and trying to change things in whatever capacity they can. So that's kind of where I believe NFTs can can play that role.